Happy Monday to you, everyone. Hope you're doing well. Hope you had a great weekend, and I hope you made a lot of progress training your dog. Today, I want to talk about a common issue that occurs whenever you're doing remote training collar, uh, training with your dog using a remote training collar. And that's when dogs become what we call collar wise, meaning you own one dog with the remote training collar on and a totally different dog when it's off. In fact, that was a problem to such a degree that when remote training collars first came out, they were worried about this so much that they used to include what's known as a dummy collar, meaning you'd have your real electronic collar and then sitting right next to it, on the outside you couldn't tell a bit of difference, but the dummy collar was probably just filled up with concrete. And what you were supposed to do is put the dummy collar on your dog when you had to go to work or do whatever you needed to do, and then when you're ready to do real training, you're supposed to come up and put your remote training collar on the dog, take off the dummy collar like some magician, like some sleight of hand, like the dog didn't know exactly what just happened. And I'm telling you, that's why they got rid of them. It's also why we used to say dummy collars are for dummies. So let me tell you what's going on because we do have a viewer who wrote into me and said, Brian, hey, I got this problem. I got a dog who's just spot on perfect. He pays attention to me. He doesn't wander off. I give him a command. He does it Johnny on the spot. But that's only when the remote training collar's on him, when he's wearing it. I take it off and suddenly I have a completely different dog. He doesn't pay attention to me. He wanders off. He does everything exactly the direct opposite of what he does wearing a collar. Well, I'm telling you what, that viewer has a lot of company. I, I probably hear this at least once a week from someone who claims to have the same problem with their dog. So let me tell you what's going on here. Anytime I break down a problem, anytime, I'm going to apply science to it. There's always three questions running through my head. And they should be doing the same thing to you. Anytime you come upon a problem with your dog, a behavior that you don't understand and you wish to resolve, run these three questions through your head always. One, what is the cause or what we call the assumed cause? Yeah, there, there's some guesswork in here. There's guesswork. So just throw down your best guess. It's a hypothesis. Throw it down, write it down, put it on a piece of paper. What do you think is causing this behavior? Okay, and then move on to the next question. How does it develop or how did it develop? How did we get to this point? Write down your best guess. Just keep working through it. And then finally ask yourself, what is the survival value? Meaning, I told you a long time ago, dogs are born with biologically prepared learning. I talked about it yesterday in which they have fixed genetic programmed behaviors. There are behaviors already in them, came with them, whether you like it or not, they're in there and they are directed to enhance the dog's ability to survive. That's what they're all about. Not to learn how to roll over, shake hands, but how to find life sustaining energy, how to find a mate, reproduce, and have a safe dwelling place for your offspring called a territory. Everything in their mind evolves around those four vital needs. So anytime we look at a behavior, if it fits any of those needs, we need to really take it under serious consideration and because that behavior is going to be learned and learned faster than all that fluffy stuff. Okay, so I kind of broke it down for you. What is the cause of that behavior? We call it collar-wise. Yeah, collar-wise, meaning the dog knows it's wearing a collar and it knows what wearing the collar means. It picked that up. But how did that develop? Well, for my biologically prepared learning, dogs have what's known as search image formation. We've talked about that in the past as well. And that doesn't mean just visual, even though that's the first and most pronounced uh, usage of search image image formation. They also do it through their olfactory sense. Take a detection dog, for instance. When they're searching for drugs, narcotics in their mind, the image they see in their mind is a ball. Is a ball, because that's how the training is conducted. The ball is simply tainted, made to smell like various drugs or various explosives. 
Yeah, anytime a dog does detection work, that's what's in their mind, some sort of toy. So they can also gain search image formation through visual context, through a olfactory context, but also, guys, through haptic, touch, the very touch. And also couple that with the fact that animals are just like us. We are designed to notice anything that stands out. Something standing out has great value from two different perspectives. One, it could be food. Hence why with this, the search image formation, I can tell the difference between antlers and tree branches at 100 yards if I'm a wolf or a dog. I can also tell what is harmful to me from a distance. A hunter, a porcupine, ice that's too thin, if I'm in the jungle, a brightly colored poison frog, a lionfish, it goes on and on. So we're trained to do that. Well, let me tell you something. The signal that your dog receives from a remote training collar, that haptic signal stands out. There is nothing in nature that replicates that. That stands out. So the fact that it stands out means I'm going to use all of my senses, all of them, to determine what can be the cause of this thing I'm feeling. So it doesn't take a dog long to understand and go, I think it might have something to do with this. Okay, so now knowing that, knowing that their senses are on high alert, here's what happens next. You put it on the dog, you do your training, you have that wonderful dog and then you take it off. Well, let me tell you something real quickly here. All learning, all learning has some survival value to it. Maybe just a little bit. In all learning, there's a cost associated with it. All learning. You don't get to learn anything on this planet without a cost. There's a cost involved. Brain power, physical power, time, pain, pleasure. But what's the cost of that pleasure? There is no learning on the planet Earth that doesn't come with a cost. And so knowing that, there's a cost involved with not knowing how to control this device. So the animal's going to learn that real quickly. How do I control it? How do I turn it on? How do I turn it off? Meaning, hey, if you give me a command, then if I do the command, I do it in a certain amount of time, and I do it in a certain amount of, or a certain fashion, or a certain way, then either A, the signal will go away immediately, or B, I won't feel it at all. So that's why what happens is that when we put these collars on dogs, they change because they're aware of the collar and they're aware of what the collar is doing to them and what they can now do to make sure they don't feel what the collar can give. They're making quick adjustments. They're paying attention to you. I'm watching you. I, I don't want to miss the signal. <laughs> if you do this thing like come or like, like down or no, I want to know that. I want to know that so I can avoid that. So hence why we have more attentiveness. Hence why we don't really go wandering off too far, because if we go wandering off too far, then maybe I don't hear you call me. I don't hear you call me. I don't respond. I feel this. And lastly, because there's survival value, I don't want to feel this. I really don't want to feel it at any level, whether it's an irritant level or even a pain level. I don't want to feel it. Animals are smart. Why would I feel this? The only way I'd want to feel it is if the other thing out there that has my attention at this moment could tempt me to go for it and say, okay, this, I, I do feel it, but it's not that bad. The squirrel is worth it. But again, a savvy trainer will say, okay, I got it. I'm with you, buddy. I got it. Yeah, yeah 18 lost to squirrel. So let me turn up to maybe 28. And suddenly, eh, remote caller is back in first place, squirrel's in second place.
But dogs learn all these things. And so here's the problem with this. Cow dog, come here, buddy. Collar up, dude. I'm just going to throw a collar on him real quick. Atta boy, buddy. And as you see with him, there's no loss in attitude whatsoever. I really don't have a change in a dog other than I have a treat right here, and he knows i got treats now in my treat pouch. Free cow dog. But he's still spunky. He's still the same captain that you've always seen in all the videos, even though he's had a lot of training with a remote training collar. Wow, my life is enhanced. His is enhanced because of it. But I'm not going to go down that road. But here's what happened here. You have all of this going on. You have incredible awareness. I know what's going on, but here's the problem. It was used too soon, and that's one of the dangers with remote training callers. Everyone, everyone wants their dog to go from point A, an untrained dog, to point B. Well, all that journey in the middle, I don't care what you use, whether you use a leash, whether you use a halty, gentle leader, remote training collar, prong collar, it does not matter. What matters is this, over a period of time, if your dog receives a stereotyped signal, stereotype, remember one of the rules of habituation? The repeated stereotyped signal is the one that humans and animals habituate to because they no longer stand out. They no longer do. So when they don't stand out, I don't need to pay that much attention to it. And if I don't pay that much attention to it, well, then I'm not even going to even notice it's on my neck. So one thing about remote callers, make sure you do this. When you're training your dog, you're beginning training with your dog, and you want your dog to go from point A, not train, to point B, train, if this is the device you're using, especially this device, because it stands out unlike any other device in the world, make sure that you put it on your dog and your dog wears it every single day for a long period of time. Now, how long is long? It depends on what age your dog is when you start and what is the end goal. Captain, for instance, wore a remote training collar probably every day for about seven or eight months, if I recall correctly. This was years ago. Years ago. Every day. Did I train him every day? No. But two things occurred here. Number one, okay, it's just another piece of jewelry on my neck. Kind of like what this microphone is starting to be to me. Yeah, I put this thing on every day. So it's just another piece of jewelry hanging around Brian's neck. I don't even notice it after a while to such a point that I've had many heart attacks when I started these Facebook Lives and went, oh, I had to look down real quick and make sure I had my microphone on. How many of you do that? Huh? Put a pencil behind your ear. Do a lot of work and all of a sudden you're looking around for your pencil. Can't find your pencil. It's right there behind your ear. It happens all the time. So put your collar on your dog a lot. Let it work a lot, a lot. You're not pressing the button all the time. You're just putting it on your dog. So soon I don't even notice the collar. Then number two, stereotype the signal. Stereotype it. Give them a signal. Come, make sure come happens. Down, make sure down happens. Stay, make sure stay happens. Send him the signal. Send him the search image formation haptic signal that stands out. Do it over and over again goes from explicit memory to procedural memory, becomes habit forming, becomes fixed. Yeah, fixed. Fixed action pattern. A biological reflex to any given stimulus. Yeah, that's the one where you call your dog, your dog comes to you and goes, how did I get here? Yeah, that thing. Instant instant. Once you arrive there, cow dog, let me uncollar you, dude. Free cow dog. It won't matter. You'll get the same cattle dog. Collar on, collar off. It won't matter. He'll do the behaviors. He'll do it with the same attitude because he doesn't know how to do differently. So there you go, guys. A little bit of a long answer, but I wanted to make sure I went through it step by step. Any training device you use, I don't care what collar it is, I don't care if it's a leash, I don't care if it's a prong collar, I went down that list. The biggest mistake people make is they put it on their dog, do some training. Finish your training, they take it off their dog. Oh my gosh. 
If we can have kids in JK know the difference between ding, the bell means recess, versus ding, the bell means take your seat and open up your books. We know it. We know it. So therefore, don't let your dog know this. Train the behavior. Anything you use is just the means to justify the end. And the beautiful thing about a dog. You ever hear the saying, you can't teach an old dog new tricks? That's what you're fighting there, baby. That's what you're fighting. So make sure while you're doing all these stereotype signals, stereotype responses over and over again, over and over again, day in, week out, month in, year out. Be happy with what you're teaching because soon they will become fixed. And when they do, if they're good ones, you're going to love it because they're in there, baby. They are in there. And if they're bad, all right, we got to go work because it's going to take a whole lot to make those go away. Okay, so that's it for a remote training caller. So all of you now should be caller wise yourself. Don't fall into that trap. Don't be one of those dummies that they made dummy caller for. Put the darn thing on your dog. Tell the dog. Call her up, dude. Come on, man. Bam. There we go. Good boy. And then go on with your day. I'm going to let Captain wear that for a little while right after this video. I'm going to go about my day. He just got another piece of jewelry on his neck. It looks good on you, dude. And then I'll take it off later on. If you do the same thing, guarantee you, your dog will not become collar wise. All right, that's it for today, guys. I'll see you tomorrow. Enjoy the rest of your day. Have a great training day. And if you've got any questions, anything you want me to go over, you know what to do. Send it to me. I'll cover it as soon as I can. Take care. Come on, buddy. Oh, God.